In this video, we're going to talk about partial derivatives. Now, this is something you already know. Uh, you can probably skip this video or watch it in uh, speed times too, just to make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, the reason why it is here is because obviously we need partial derivative for partial differential equations. And we understand that last year was quite uh, special to say the least. So if for some reason there was something that you missed, here's the way to basically understand again or just review partial derivatives. But again, most likely that is something you can skip or you can go, uh, you can fast forward through this video. Okay, uh, let me consider uh, d and n two integers not equal to zero. Uh, or d will be my the set where I start, or n will be the start the set where I arrive, and I will consider u in the starting set, uh, which will be a non-empty open set. Now, a function f from u to r n will be differentiable at a point in this open set, that point x naught, if there exists a linear application L going from R D to R N and a neighborhood of X naught such that F minus F of X naught is L X minus X naught plus a small o of the norm of X minus X naught, that's the Landau notation. In other words, locally, I can approximate my function F by F X naught plus a linear um, um, application from Rd to Rn, and that linear application obviously will come a very, will play a very important role in what's to come. Now, what we will define is the partial derivatives. If I equip Rd with a basis e1 to ed, then for every i between 1 and d, then I will define the partial derivative of f with respect to xi at the point x0 as the limit of x0 plus sei minus f of x0 over h. Okay. Now, just to make sure that we are all in agreement, uh, there is uh, like a little bit of a, of a, of a notation uh, thing to, to point out here. Uh, x1 to xd are the uh, variables with respect to which I differentiate, but the point of differentiation is, is called x0. It's not, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with x1 to xd. x0 is actually going to be uh, x0 1 to x0 d. So just wanted to point this out. It can be confusing for people who are not used to it. N not you, but I mean some people. So this is called the partial derivative of f with respect to xi at x0. And it's also denoted dxi or di f of x0. There are a lot of notations for this. All right. Okay. Now uh, the differential will be the the matrix uh, defined like this. It will be uh, well, basically that matrix. It's just easier to to actually see what it is. Uh, so that would be a uh, D by N matrix, and that is obviously called the differential. Now, if n is equal to 1, which means that my image, uh, the, the, the image set, the, the, the codomain, is of dimension 1, then f is a scalar valued function, and l will go from rd to r. This is called a linear form, since obviously it is linear. Uh, then the gradient of f at x0 will be denoted grad of f x0, or del f x0, and it is a vector such that L H is equal to the gradient F X naught H and you do the inner product in R D. Okay, so here is the definition of the gradient of F. It's basically uh, the column with all of the dth derivatives of F at X naught. So the components of the gradients are the coefficient that appear in the equation of the tangent plane of the graph. So uh, what we're saying is that what you will have here is the normal vector field. That's why in the previous video, what I was saying is in the very last example we gave, uh, we, we create gradient is coming up. Uh, that would be the answer to your previous question. Of course, if it is the unit vector field, then you need to renormalize it, which means you need to divide it by the norm of that vector. Now, when n is equal to d, it means that f goes from Rd to Rd, and that L is an endomorphism of Rd. It goes from Rd to Rd, and it is linear. Uh, what happens then is I can define the divergence of f at x0. It will be denoted uh, divergence f of x0, sometimes also del 
scalar product with f of x0, for reasons that actually come from the very definition of the divergence, it is the sum of the uh, derivatives of fi with respect to the xi. So you take the first component of f and you differentiate it with respect to the first variable, plus second component of f differentiated with respect to the second variable, all the way to d. And that's why it kind of kind of looks like a the, 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 the del operator uh, you know, all the divergence, I mean, I'm sorry, all the derivatives uh, with respect to uh, the first, second, third, all the way to D, and the first component of F, uh, second component of F all the way, so that's why it looks like uh, a, a scalar product versus not, just notation-wise, it looks like it. All right. Okay, now the Laplace operator, which is a very important operator, differential operator uh, in PDE, that is simply the divergence of the gradient, in other words, it is the sum of the uh, second derivatives of the function. So now we're taking a function f that goes from rd to r, n is equal to 1, and uh, the, the, the Laplace operator will be defined as so. You can also define the Laplace operator for functions that go from rd to rn, but we'll just uh, you know, consider in this class uh, functions that go from rd to r, and that again is the Laplace operator. You can also use, you can also see this notation uh, del square for the Laplacian, even though I will try to avoid it because there is sometimes a confusion with the Hessian matrix, so just out of to avoid to avoid it I'll, I'll, to avoid any confusion I will not use this notation but you might see it in some books now I would like to introduce the multi-index notation the multi-index notation well relies on the multi-index which is simply um, a, a diopole of uh, integers non-negative integers so it can be I mean it's basically alpha is alpha 1 to alpha D uh, they are integers they can be 0 but they cannot be negative and what we have here for, for instance 104 is a uh, three-dimensional multi-index. The sum of the components is usually denoted with a bar like absolute values, even though it's not an absolute value, and that's just the sum of the components of the multi-index. For instance, the previous example, that would have been five. Uh, and based on the multi-index, you can define the uh, derivative, and that's why we use multi-index, because it's convenient for this reason. So d alpha will be basically the, the differentiation with respect to uh, all the components of this multi-index. Let me give you an example in 104, uh, then basically d104 would be the fifth derivative uh, of f with respect to x1 once and x3 four times. Now let me give you the definition of a linear differential operator of order k. Well, basically that would be p equal to the sum of the a alpha d alpha for every multi-index alpha such that the sum of the components is smaller than the order k. Uh, of course, you don't want all of the uh, a alpha such that uh, the, 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 the sum of the indices is, is, is equal to k would be zero, otherwise that would not be of order k to begin with. So, of course. Um, and what you call the, 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 the symbol of the operator is the polynomial that corresponds to, uh, that, uh, uh, to, to that sum, but instead of having the derivative, you have x raised to power alpha, which means that it's basically x1 raised to alpha 1, uh, xd raised to power alpha d, and that would be the symbol of the operator. So actually it's easier to understand on an example. Let's consider this uh, Laplace operator that we talked about earlier. So again, the Laplace operator is uh, the second derivative with respect to x plus the second derivative with respect to y if you consider a function from r2 to r. Um, and what we're saying is that obviously this falls into the definition of a linear differential operator because I can write this as d20 plus d02. You see, I differentiate twice with respect to the first variable and zeroth time with respect to the second variable. Uh, that's the first, uh, that was the first, that's d, d, d over dx squared. Uh, I mean, the second derivative with respect to x, and the second component, d02, that is uh, d over d y squared, in other words, the second derivative with respect to y. Which, of course, I can write like the full-fledged uh, um, polynomial, if you want, uh, in, in the derivative. That would be a 1 d20. I don't have any cross-derivative. I don't have any d 
over dx dy, I don't have this, so that puts a zero. Then I have my d over dy uh, twice. I mean, second derivative with respect to y, as we said. Then we have zero times d10, because d10 is simply the derivative with respect to x. d01 is the derivative with respect to uh, y. And d00 is the function itself. All right, uh, so what we get is basically this where a20, a02 are 1, and a11, a10, a01, and a00 are equal to 0. And obviously the symbol in this case would be x1 square plus x2 square. And often we just call, we would just use x and y, so that would be x square plus y square.